In this video today, we're gonna to talk about the five misconceptions of sober living homes. There are bad apples. However, um, there are also amazing sober living homes. And it's, it's important to do your research and make sure that any of these misconceptions are not true of the sober living home that, you, that you're gonna end up at or that one of your clients or one of your patients is gonna end up at. And while sober living is not the same as treatment, um, there is no clinical work done at a sober living home. Many say that it is just as valuable, if not more valuable, because while a person is in treatment, they're gonna get clinical work done, they're gonna dig into the trauma, and they're gonna get clean and sober. Sober living is the step down, it's the next step where a person is gonna learn new lifestyle habits, new uh, coping skills, and they're just gonna learn how to live life differently, develop new friends, new hobbies, new interests, new habits, and a, a new way of living life. So um, five misconceptions of sober living homes. The first is they are all in bad neighborhoods. This is not true. Some are in bad neighborhoods, but some are in amazing neighborhoods. And that's one of the reasons why there's such a huge discrepancy in the the rate of sober living homes. Uh, you can find a sober living home or a halfway house for one or $200 a, a, a week, or you can find sober living homes for as much as 10 or 20, or I've even seen sober living homes for $50,000 a month, but that's completely over the top. So um, make sure you do your research when you're looking for a sober living home and you're looking at the neighborhood and you're looking at the quality of the neighborhood and the neighborhood is a neighborhood that, that you, you lived in before you went to treatment, you lived in before you got clean and sober. It's a, so, it's a, it's a neighborhood that is a safe environment that's conducive to your recovery. The next is, um, the homes, are, the homes are run down and poorly kept. This is not true. While some of them are run down and poorly kept, some of them are very well maintained. And for example, um, we have Camelback Recovery has sober living homes in Tucson, in Phoenix, and in Scottsdale. And we've been open since 2014, and our neighbors love us. We've never had a complaint. The reason we've never had a complaint is because we're good neighbors, we maintain our properties, all of the residents have chores, we all take pride and ownership in keeping the house in really good condition. So, um, so that's important. Uh, misconception number three, sober living is not needed post-treatment. This is, um, this is not true. <laughs> sober living is the best thing a person can do to protect the investment that they made in treatment in the first place. Someone goes to treatment for 30 to 60 days or 90 days or sometimes even up to six months and once they leave treatment, they're no longer in a bubble. And statistically, people that go to sober living for at least three months are 50% more likely to stay clean and sober for longer than a year. People that don't go to sober living after treatment, these, this success rate is less than 10%. So statistics are, are against you if you don't go to sober living. Sober living is recommended. Misconception number four, they are unregulated. This is not true. They used to be unregulated, but today, um, we're in 2020 right now. There are more regulations. There are associations. There's the National, National Affiliation of Recovery Residences. There, in Arizona, we have the Arizona Recovery Housing Association. We also have the Department of Health Services here in Arizona. So in order to run, to legitimately run a sober living home here in Arizona, the home needs to be licensed by the Arizona Department of Health Services, which um, there are inspections, there are standards, and there are hoops to jump through 
in order for a home to become licensed by the Department of Health Services. And that's, that's important. So you wanna do your research and make sure that the home that you end up at, the home that your client ends up at is licensed with the Arizona Department of Health Services and also a member of the Arizona Recovery Housing Association. And misconception number five, they are havens for continued drug use. Again, there, there are bad apples and there are homes where people are gonna drink and use and they're not gonna get kicked out. And this is why it's important to do your research and make sure that the home that you're gonna end up at or the home that your client is gonna end up at or the home that your loved one is gonna end up at, they have rules and they, they drug test, they breathalyze, there's a high level of accountability, there's a high level of structure, there are consequences if a person drinks or uses or relapses. Relapse does happen early in recovery. It's not whether or not a relapse is gonna happen because relapses happen, relapses happen at sober living homes, relapses happen more often at some sober living homes and less often at others. So finding the, the sober living home that has less relapses and what's the protocol what's the protocol if and when somebody does relapse and what is it going to take if they're going to let that person back into the home because that's part of the journey relapse is not part of the journey for everybody but relapse is part of the journey for for many people or some people anyways Hey guys, Tim Westbrook, Camelback Recovery. If you got value from this video today, be sure to like, comment, or subscribe. If you know somebody that might gain value or might benefit from this content, be sure to share it with them. See the description below with links to our website and to other relevant information. If you need to reach us, call us or text us 602-466-9880 or go to our website, camelbackrecovery.com. Thank you.